So we've made the, the lap, uh, and the lap was very successful. So that's ready to go. The next thing is we need a way to hold the part. So what my plan is, is to use a bolt to hold the part and bolt it into a, a piece of aluminum that goes in the chuck of the lathe. Now, we'll get to the, the bar of aluminum soon, but the first thing I notice is that we have to take down the screw head so that uh, it is smaller than the part. So this is currently, the part's about 610. Uh, we're gonna take this screw head down to about 590 thereabouts, and that'll give us enough clearance for lapping, and uh, it won't interfere. So there it is. There's enough flats there uh, to tighten it, and it'll remain clear of the surface as we lap it. Next, we have to make the arbor to hold the, uh, the part into the lathe. Let's go do that. Well, we have everything we need now to do the lapping on the two rolls. We've got the bolt properly modified. We've got the arbor, which is sized a little smaller than the roll, and that's ready to go. We've got the lap ready to, to actually do the lapping. Keep in mind that these dimensions uh, between these two rolls uh, need to be equal. They do not need to be uh, any specific value. Right now, the d diameter of these rolls over all their lengths is within, uh, within about plus or minus a tenth, maybe a little, little more. All we're doing is bringing it that in to zero, zero, uh, and we'll take some readings and show you, you know, what we're up against. But that's the next step is we'll make some measurements, we'll fill out a card for each of these, and we'll know where we're gonna go when we mount these guys up for lapping. Uh, and the lapping will be done right in the lathe. Uh, we'll just put out some protective covering on the ways and uh, we should be good to go. So it's feeling very tight up here, just like it should, and very loose down here. Very tight up here, and very loose down here. So Robin made a comment the other day that the feel of the lap will be very useful and indicative of the diameter, and boy howdy, is he ever right. So I'm going to keep working this and I will take my screwdriver and tighten up that little clamp. And uh, we'll see how that goes. A little more tightness. Uh, I think it's been very slow. This is aluminum oxide in oil. We may try something else. I'm going to give it some thought. Mm -hmm. 
So this is Time Saver. Time Saver 77 in DTE 32 light oil. An exact concentration of I have no idea what. I think the, uh, I could feel a little more bite. I think the aluminum oxide was a little too fine. Six oh nine six six oh nine six five six oh nine six. Wow, six oh nine six six oh nine seven six oh nine six five. This is impressive. So we might have. I think we're we're going to stop um, and maybe switch over. Now the clover, not the clover, the um, the time saver breaks down. I believe it's garnet based, so we can actually go to a. Um, to a finer grit with the lap, and the the particles are breaking down constantly, so we should be able to get to that finer grit. Although I gotta tell you, that's looking mighty good. That's looking really fine. So let's um, yeah, let's make up a little batch here with the uh, the finer time saver and see what happens. So this goes with that. This goes with that. I'll make up the batch with the, uh, the smaller stuff, and we're gonna we're gonna wash out our lap. Now, if this was diamond, I can't do this because the particles would embed in there forever. But because this isn't diamond, I think I can get away with it. Six oh nine seven. Six oh nine seven. Six oh nine six. So it's actually six oh nine seven, and at the bottom or the, the side near the nut, it's six oh nine five five. So still a little taper left to come out. I think there's a little ovality in in the um, this inside part. I don't know why. But uh, we're going to just lap some more just like we were doing. And um, yeah, just concentrate on the upper two thirds. You can really feel uh, the taper. And I think the ovality is coming out. You can feel it.
Well, we gotta think this one through. Not sure exactly how we're gonna handle this. We're getting there though. I mean, I would indicate it, except we didn't take any special care about centering this up. So that's not gonna help us. Um, I may remove this and do a little more careful investigation, or I may just flip it around for the heck of it. So we brought this up to, um, we brought this up to 150 RPM. sure what I'm seeing but I do know I like it. I'm gonna get my six inch stones and I think we're gonna go at it. Ha! All right, we're seeing some stuff. It's really interesting. It shows. Wow. There's some shiny spots at this end here. Okay. Shiny. And this is kind of shiny right here. And as we rotate it, Pretty dull, although maybe a little shiny in the middle. And then look at this, very shiny at the end. So, oh, here we go. It's shiny there. So two points of contact here and here, what does that mean? And 180 degrees away, a point of contact here. What does that look like? That looks like a bend which is crazy. Maybe we're bending it a little bit. Here's what I know. I know that after, uh, after lapping it with the time saver, okay, uh, we, we were getting some interesting mixed messages. It was saying that right in here, it needed, there was more pressure on the on the lap so it wanted more right this was kind of crazy so at this point i think i'm going to take a break because you don't want to do precision work when you're tired and hungry And then we'll uh, we'll come back to this, but it's getting mighty interesting. I may mark this up and then hit it with a stone and see what happens. Purple Sharpie. So the spots that are circled in black or marked in black were showing contact. So doesn't that look like that's a smile and that's a frown. 
So this thing looks bent, despite the fact that we ground it between centers, which is even weirder. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Well, I am very happy with the results. So here's a little more about the story. Um, you'll note that it's very, very straight and very round uh, and very on size. So that's this one. And now I've got to make this one match. Come take a look at, at what I've been doing. So here's the lapping station. Um, we covered everything in paper, probably, you know, overreacted here. But uh, there's my arbor. There's the bolt. So I started with a coarse, uh, actually, I started playing around with aluminum oxide. That was 5 micron was doing, like, not much. Then we went with the time saver, which is a garnet. We went with uh, medium, yeah, medium and fine, I think. I have it written down. But that was slow as anything. I mean, literally, it was taking forever. Finally... I listened to what Robin told me a while ago, and I went went to Diamond, and this is um, this is Hyperion, I believe that's two to four micron Diamond. Um, there's there's your numbers, okay. I must have used as much as a gram of this stuff. It was uh, not not terribly much material. You can see a little bit of the of the Diamond the beige colored diamond there on the outside and um you know the proof of the pudding is in the tasting here it is and and those numbers are just just ridiculous so uh this guy as measured in the center is two tenths over so we got to take two tenths out of this and it's got some taper to it which you know what a surprise uh, on the order of a tenth of taper. So um, we're going to start lapping this. We're going to start with the diamond. We're not messing around with the garnet. And we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, we have arrived at zero, 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 zero on the rolls. <laughs> so finishes gorgeous. Um, let's take a look at some measurements here, shall we? So uh, we're set up in relative mode here. So zero. 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 The other one. Zero, 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 zero. Yeah, this one's still reading a little high, but you know. No, zero. If you get a little rambunctious on the thimble, you will definitely move the reading. Zero. So I'm happy. I consider these uh, done. Certainly done within the accuracy we need, which is 50 millionths. And uh, it's a differential measurement. It's not an absolute measurement. By the way, the absolute, I'll show you the absolute measurement. There we go. So 6096, okay? Now, if that number sounds familiar, just look over here. Six oh nine six. 
So I think I'm a happy camper. I'm a happy camper. So as we bring this project in for a landing, uh, we're checking for any kind of bend in the in the rod. Uh, if it's a banana, the end of the banana is going to describe a, a circle and move that indicator. And I did not find any indication of that. So I think we got cylinders. Um, and I think we got cylinders that are straight. Now, I should note, that this is simple, uh, cheap bearing balls. I don't even know if they're bearing balls. Uh, in a one, two, three block. All we care about is that we have a fixed uh, pair of points to roll on. Uh, see also Keith Fenner's videos on straightening shafts. It's it's sort of the same thing, and we're just looking for any non straightness of this particular roll and so far it looks good uh, we did check both rolls they both indicate straight so as far as that's concerned we're looking good Then we moved on to looking at uh, relative measurements again. First, we're setting up with one roll. We're measuring the center of it. Uh, and we're establishing that as our reference. And then we'll go and hit five points on each roll um, to check for its relative, uh, relative uh, value. So, so at the top of that roll, there was a, maybe a little bit of something going on, but basically everywhere else we found zero, zero. So within 50 millionths, um, these are also on size. Now, as we previously said in the in, earlier in the video, they don't have to be a particular size, but they do have to match. And so far, so good. So as we started finishing up with these measurements, I, I had a concern, and the concern was that we removed material from both the rolls and we removed material from the sign plate itself and the, the seats where these rolls go, uh, and I wanted to make double sure that we got the, uh, the rolls seated on the uh, ground portions, and that's the next thing we did. Is, uh, is to check for that. So here's the sign plate itself, and I decided to mark up the contact surfaces with purple sharpie, <laughs> which, which we've been advised by uh, by uh, Robin Renzetti and Tom Lipton, uh, is is the right sharpie for the job. So here we're marking up both surfaces, and we're looking for contact by rubbing, you know, putting the rolls down where they belong, and then rubbing them a little bit, and then just looking for the contact. So as we do this. Uh, you'll see we're not we're not going crazy. We don't have to to do a heck of a lot of rubbing, but then look for the contact line in the purple in the purple sharpie. And uh, the first one was pretty obvious. Um, there's a line right down the middle there. Okay, that's good. It looks good. And then there's a line on the vertical wall, and that also looks good. So now let's go do the other side with the other roll and make sure we have contact there. This is this is also further confirming that we don't have a banana because if we had a banana we would we would see some um, inconsistency in those marks and we would possibly feel um, some rocking in in the rolls. Then you'd have rock and roll.
there it is. A good line on the floor. Now, on that back wall, it was marginal. Uh, that's why I lifted it up to double check it. Um, the contact is good. The contact is all on the ground surface, but it's really close to the edge. So, there you go. Good view right there. We made it. So there shouldn't be any reason uh, that we can't declare the rolls done and ready for mounting. In our next video, we'll be mounting it, which sounds simple, doesn't it? But we have to make sure that the screws are not screwing up the project. We'll be back. Doink!